In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Before we begin the celebration tonight, I'd just like to acknowledge your presence and thank you for your prayerful presence. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty to uh, express our gratitude to you for being with us this evening. I especially want to welcome Father John Reardon, the Vocation Director for the Diocese of Springfield, who joins us, Father Chin Nguyen from the Diocese of Worcester, uh, Father Bill John Acosta from the Diocese of Raleigh, uh, Monsignor, uh, Father Gabriel from the Cameroon, who is stationed here in Boston, Sister Agnes, who is a guest of uh, John Tiny, a relative of his, who joins us as well, and uh, Father Bill Hahn, who is the Vicar for Clergy for the Diocese of Columbus. I welcome in a very special way Father Monsignor Francis Kelly, uh, one of my predecessors, a good friend of the seminary, whose uh, service here is legendary. And uh, we are so grateful to you, Francis, for all that you did uh, in your time and all that you've done since from the seminary. Uh, we are in your debt, and I am certainly, as a uh, brother priest, very grateful for your service, your ministry, and most of all, for your fraternal affection and uh, charity. So thank you very much and welcome. Uh, you, you all know Archbishop Joseph, and we're delighted to have him with us. Uh, it, for this great ceremony, I mean, his time with us is limited. Uh, he will be leaving soon, but he has graced us with his time, his presence, and we're very grateful to him. And lastly, it is a great pleasure for me to introduce to you uh, one of, I think, one of the best bishops in this country. Uh, he is a priest of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. He was the academic dean and one of formator at Mount St. Mary's of the West in Cincinnati. He is also the first Indian American bishop. He is the first person of color to be a bishop in Columbus. And he is the youngest bishop in the United States. Would you please welcome Bishop Earl Fernandez. Thank you, Father Kiley. My dear friends in Christ, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Alone are the most high, 
Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who will to provide shepherds for your people, pour out in your church a spirit of piety and fortitude to raise up worthy ministers for your altars and make them ardent yet gentle heralds of your gospel. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of work, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, mighty deeds to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another varieties of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. the Lord ever before me. Even in the night, I trust in him. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You will show me the path to life. Fullness of joy is in your presence. 
the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, I'm very happy to be here with you at Pope St. John the 23rd Seminary to celebrate this rite of candidacy. I want to thank Father uh, Kylie for his kind invitation, and I thank the seminary formators here present for their hard work. Seminary formation is some of the most difficult, yet most critical, most important work in the church today. I'm especially grateful for the presence of Monsignor Francis Kelly, former rector here, who was also my superior when I was doing my graduate studies in Rome. In 1972, it was a great year, the year of my birth, uh, 51 years ago, Pope St. Paul VI abolished the minor orders. And with his motu proprio, ad pascendum, he introduced the right of admission for candidates to the diaconate and priesthood. What is candidacy? Well, the right of candidacy was developed to replace the minor order of tonsure, 
by which one entered the clerical state. From the looks of things here, I think some of you have been naturally tonsured by the Lord. Many of the prayers and rituals associated with the minor orders had become antiquated, and it was thought that a more meaningful rite needed to be developed to mark the transition into the seminary. What is candidacy? First of all, it is an offering on the part of the candidate, and it is a manifestation of his will. Ad Pashendum describes candidacy as the ritual whereby one who aspires to ordination publicly manifests his will to offer himself to God and the church so that he may exercise a sacred order. To those receiving candidacy, compelled by the love of Christ and strengthened by the inner working of the Holy Spirit, you have arrived at the moment when you are to express openly your desire to be bound in holy orders for the service of God and mankind. As St. Paul said in our first reading, to each individual the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. The Spirit is given not only for your benefit, but for the benefit of the whole church, for the common good. Secondly, candidacy is also an acceptance by the church of this offering. The church selects and calls each man. The church numbers and enrolls him among the candidates for diaconate and priesthood. When calling for ordination, the bishop chooses from among the men enrolled as candidates. Today, we have the privilege of receiving with joy the desire that each of you expresses. Thirdly, candidacy imposes duties upon the candidate to care for his vocation and to foster it in a special way. At the same time, the church provides spiritual assistance for each candidate to do this and to submit more humbly to God. The right of candidacy is the first commitment, helping the candidate to discern his vocation. It establishes a spiritual bond between the ordinary and the candidate and the local church, understanding that charity is the bond of perfection. From this day on, you must cultivate more fully your vocation, using especially those means that can be offered to you as help and support by the ecclesial community entrusted with this task. Sometimes your seminary formators have to be hard on you, but this is to care for your vocation. Other times they will be very infirming, affirming to you. But the important thing is to trust them. You entrust yourselves, your vocation, to the care of the church, and they want, your formators want you to succeed. They want to care for your very special vocations, because at the end of the project, God willing, you will be a priest capable of bringing the sacraments of salvation to the holy people of God. That's what candidacy is, but what is the spiritual meaning of candidacy? First of all, it is a summoning of the church. The church summons. Christ calls men through his church. In today's gospel, he saw the vast crowds, and he saw how they were harassed and helpless. His heart was moved with compassion, with pity for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Seldom, if ever, in the Gospels did Jesus ask his disciples to pray for something specific. But in tonight's Gospel, he does. Ask the master of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. The people of God in your respective diocese have been praying for, to the Lord for you that more ministers of his mercy, that more ministers of his compassion might be raised up. I made a visit to your little Blessed Sacrament Chapel, and come entering the chapel, it says, pray for vocations. This is what everyone has been praying for, and you have arrived at this day. Christ the Lord calls each of us by name, just as he called the twelve. Our gospel acclamation, I chose you from the world that you might go and bear much fruit. Or again, Jesus says in St. John's Gospel, it was not you who chose me, but I chose you. Or even in the Old Testament, the Lord said to Jeremiah, I claimed you for my own before I fashioned you in my mother's womb. The Lord has a definite plan for you, for your vocations, for your life, and for his church. But we might ask, 
Is this call a result of my own merits? Or is it by God's design and his grace? St. John Paul II said, a vocation is a gift whose purpose is to build up the church and to increase the kingdom of God in the world. And this gift must be cherished. But the church herself has to test the call. The church must test and inquire about person's aptitude to respond to the call. When I was a freshman in English, my English teacher, she used to say, uh, she used to give us uh, tests and quizzes all the time, and she used to call them educational opportunities. <laughs> Gentlemen, that's what the seminary is, an educational and a formational opportunity. And once you have been tested and found worthy, the bishop will call each of you and ordain you, marking you with the singular seal of the Holy Spirit for the ministry of God and his church. Those called to holy orders will be deputed to continue the saving work of Christ, which he accomplishes on earth. But what is it that Christ brings? He brings salvation. Consider, if you will, the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was up in the sycamore tree. He was despised as a tax collector. He had all of this world's goods, but he lacked love. He had a desire to see Jesus, so he climbed the sycamore tree. He wanted to see the face of the Lord. And yet Jesus also had a desire to see him, and he gazed upon him. The way he gazed at the crowds in today's gospel, with compassion and mercy, and he called him by name. Today I must dine at your house with a degree of urgency. And after one day, one evening with Jesus, his life changed and he was converted. And Jesus could say, today salvation has come to this house. But if you are a priest, that encounter can be your every day with a person in need of God's mercy. At this moment, in St. Alphonsus of Gloria, he says, you should consider the love that God bears towards your soul at this moment. He sees you. He knows you. Pope Francis would say he dreams about you. He gazes upon all of us, and he calls us to conform our lives more deeply to his. And at the same time as he gazes, he also calls. He's calling men to continue his saving work, to offer the merciful gaze which the men and women of our day so badly need, and to offer them salvation, especially the preaching of the Word and through the sacraments. And so the church summons, but the candidate also has to assent. In Genesis chapter 22, Abraham accepts God's challenge and is ready to offer his son Isaac in sacrifice. And Abraham offers his son unconditionally. We say adsum, that is, present, when our name is called. It's in this rite, I will call your names, and you will say present. And we are invited to come forward. We are not commanded to do so, but invited to. We say present, but this offering is left to our generosity. How generous am I? Sometimes I've heard priests say during marriage preparation to a couple, you must offer each yourself totally and completely to each other and to God. Nothing can be held back, not even your fertility. But are we ready to offer ourselves generously, completely, to God and to the church? It is not yet the assent to orders, but it is a way of saying, as Isaiah the prophet once said, here I am, Lord, send me. This present can only be said in humility, conscious of our own weaknesses and waywardness, knowing that we will face difficulties and responsibilities of the priesthood. And so each day we need to renew our atsum, present, to be present to the Lord, to be present to our brothers in this community, to be present to the holy people of God. But even as you renew daily your commitment, know also that your bishops pray for you and sustain you in your commitment with the words of St. Paul in his second letter to the Thessalonians. We always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith 
that the name of the Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him in accord with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Candidacy is one more thing. It is a renunciation of the spirit of the world. Candidacy doesn't change our baptismal status, but it should invite us to reflect on our baptism more deeply. It invites us to offer ourselves to God and the church and to commit ourselves to submitting to God rather than being stubborn and holding on to our own will. It demands renouncing the spirit of the world as we first did in baptism. And this is what Pope Francis continues to rail against, the spirit of worldliness in the church. Do you renounce Satan and all his evil works and all his pomps? We could ask, what in my life would keep me from being a good candidate? or a good priest? Have I tried to practice this renunciation freely and lovingly to the best of my ability? Have I been willing to die to myself and radically embrace the poverty that this renunciation signifies? It was the renunciation of the material goods of the world and the desire for worldly wealth and fame and status that led Zacchaeus and so many like him, people like Francis of Assisi or Ignatius of Loyola, to find salvation, to discover their vocations, and to have true peace. As Jesus said to Mary when Martha was complaining, Jesus said to Martha, 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 you are anxious about many things. You have need of only one thing, and Mary has chosen the better part. We can acquire enough of this world's goods, but we have need of only one thing. Jesus the Lord. Candidacy, therefore, implies a surrender to Christ. Submit to God and he will do everything for you, it says in the imitation of Christ. The candidate offers himself to God and the church. And again, we are invited to reflect on baptism. In baptism, the renunciation is followed by the cradle. Do I give my heart to Christ? Do I surrender to him? Am I an effective witness to him in my life, in my community, in my family, to my parish, to the poor? What degree of commitment is required of me now? How will, this be, how will my life, how will my commitment be different after this rite of candidacy? This type of deeper commitment requires perseverance in one's vocation. At, on the front door of the seminary, above the front door of the seminary in Cincinnati, are the words, Caritas Christi Urgit Me which we always translated, abandon hope all ye who enter these sacred portals. The charity of Christ urges me on, it urges us on. My brothers, today is a big first step in your journey of configuration to Christ. Trusting in the Lord, we, your bishops and your seminary formators, will assist you with love and prayer, knowing how challenging the commitment is to make in our present culture. We also express our gratitude to God for each of you, that he has brought you to this moment, and the whole church is grateful for your self-offering. Therefore, when you are called by name, come forward and declare your intention before the church assembled here. Leonardo Espinoza Lopez for the Diocese of Raleigh. Clifton Troy Mastrin for the Diocese of Wheeling, Charleston. 
present. Maximilian Mernke for the Archdiocese of Boston. Present. Joseph Bao Kwok Nguyen for the Diocese of Venice in Florida. Present. Beloved sons, the pastors and teachers in charge of your formation and others who know you have given a favorable account of you, and we have full confidence in their testimony. In response to the Lord's call, do you resolve to complete your preparation so that in due time, through holy orders, you will be prepared to assume ministry within the church? I do. Do you resolve to prepare yourselves in mind and spirit to give faithful service to Christ the Lord and his body, the church? I do. The church accepts your resolve with joy. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us stand. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to our Lord and God that in his kindness he may pour out the grace of his blessing on these servants of his who desire to devote themselves to the ministry of the church. That these, our brothers, may draw closer to Christ and be enabled to witness to him in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may share the burdens of men and women and always be able to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may become ministers of the church who will strengthen the faith of their brothers and sisters by word and example and gather them together to partake of the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the Lord may send workers into his harvest and fill them with the gifts of his spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people may come to the fullness of peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all our suffering brothers and sisters who share in the passion of Christ may have freedom and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Be attentive, Lord, to our prayers for your sons who wish to dedicate themselves to your service and the service of your people in the sacred ministry. In your love, graciously bless them, that they may persevere in their vocation, and that in holding fast with undivided charity to Christ the priest, they may be worthy to take up the apostolic mission. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice with your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Look kindly, we pray, O Lord, on the present offerings of your people, that the stewards of your mysteries may grow in number and persevere always in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Twenty-Third, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope. Sean, my brother bishop, bishop of this local church, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Quitolis peccatum undi miserere nobis us dei quitolis peccatum Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed with the bread of the heavenly table, we entreat you, O Lord, that through this sacrament of charity, the seed you sow with great abundance in the field of your church may come to maturity, so that many may make it in their, their choice in life to serve you and their brothers and sisters. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a word of thanks to our men who have offered themselves to Christ today uh, and have gone through the rite of candidacy. Let's show them our appreciation.
A word also, a special thanks to the whole seminary community. Uh, this will be my last time here before the ordination of uh, Deacon Jason Fox, who's from Columbus. He and I actually were one year apart in grade school, and by different paths, <laughs> the Lord has led us here. And it's good that we are here. It's good that all of you are here. But I'm very grateful for all that the faculty and staff here at John the 23rd have done to form priests for this new millennium. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <laughs>